Welcome back and let's solve 10 simultaneous equations together. These are the two linear equation style questions and this is suitable for absolutely every math student. So you need to know how to do this. Make sure you grab some paper and a pen and work with me. So there are four steps to this process. Number one, we're going to eliminate the X and the Y. We're going to make that decision. To make that happen, we make sure we have the same digit but a different sign and we multiply by what's necessary to make that happen. Step two, we add the lines together. Step three, we solve for the first variable. Step four, we sub in and we solve for the second variable. We're going to do this step 10 times. So hopefully it'll help you to remember it. So looking at question one here, every time I write out my linear equations vertically, so the x's, the y's and the numbers are all lined up, I analyse the x's and I analyse the y's. And in this question here, actually, my plus 2y and my minus 2y were already set up. So step one was actually done for me. So I could go straight into step two and add those lines together. And I got, I got x equals four. And then when I resubbed back in, I got y equals one. Don't hesitate to stop and rewind this video as much as you need so you can follow on with the work. In question two here, again, I am analysing what I need to do and I'm going to get rid of the y's in this case. So I simply need to multiply the second line by minus three. So I end up with a plus three y and a minus three y. Arguably, step one of this process is the most important step. This is where the decision making is happening. This is where, you know, you can make or break this question. I follow the same four steps here. I solve for x equals three. I take that x value for three. I sub it back into one of the original equations and I find y is equal to one. Moving on to question three. Again, it's the same type of question. I analyze my x's, I analyze my y. And in this case, I see that I've got an x and a two x. So if I simply multiply the top equation by minus two, I will turn the x into a minus two x. And then when I move on to step two, I add the lines together, my x's will simply disappear. And I solve for y equals two. And in the other part of that question, I find x is equal to four. I hope you're getting the hang of the four steps so far. So in question four here, very similar again, I'm analysing my x's and my y's and I see that if I multiply the second line by two, I will get minus two y on the top line, plus two y on the second line. That sets me up nicely for adding them in step two, where I get 11x equals 33. So I can solve that little linear equation giving me x equals three. I take that three, I go back to one of the original equations and I sub it in for X, as you can see here on the right hand side, and I solve that down again using my knowledge of linear equations and I find Y is equal to one. Now in question five, we've do a little bit more work. You notice here that there is a three and a two for the X's and a three and a two in the Y's. I need to multiply both lines by something. I find the LCM of three and two, which is six. So I want a plus six and a minus six. So I multiply the top line by three, that'll give me minus six Y. And I multiply the bottom line by two, which will end up giving me a plus six Y. So I know now in step two that the Y's will be eliminated. So I calculate that, I get X equals minus two when I solve for my first variable. I sub that back in and I get y is equal to 3 when I find my second variable. Now question 6 is throwing in a little bit of a curveball here. So as you can see me writing it out, you'll notice something that's astray with the second line. It's not in the correct form. It's very important with this style of simultaneous equations that my x's and y's and numbers are aligned vertically. So what I need to do is I need to rewrite that line as minus 2x plus y equals 3. And now I'm ready to go. I can go ahead. I start lining them up. I analyze my x's. I analyze my y's. And I notice that y's is the faster route because I only have to multiply the second line by minus 4 to give me a plus 4y and a minus 4y. In step 2 they cancel out or they end up being 0. 
and I find x is equal to 1. I sub that 1 back into the original equation and I solve for y equals 5. Bear in mind, it doesn't matter which of the original equations you actually use because x and y hold the same value in either of them. So it doesn't really matter. Now, in question 7, we have a fraction. And our second equation there, we, we can't really work with it when there's a fraction. It's not the most efficient way to work. So what I do is I get rid of that fraction by multiplying across by 2. And once I do that, I have a nice little linear equation there. X minus 2Y equals minus 4. And now I'm back to my normal process. So again, I have a look and I'm going to eliminate my Ys. I'm going to multiply the top line by 2 which gives me plus 2y minus 2y in step 2, they will end up being 0, and I'm able to solve for x equals 2. I sub that back in. Again, you can sub back into any of the equations that you are given, and we end up seeing that y is equal to 5. Sorry, y is equal to 3, excuse me. Moving on to question 8, we don't have fractions in this one, but both of the given equations are actually in the wrong form. So you can see here over on the right hand side, I'm just rearranging where the x is first, then the y, then equals to the constant number. And once I do that, then I have a look. And again, there's a bit of work here. I have to do something with both lines. So I look at my y's and I see 5 and 2. The LCM of 5 and 2 is 10. So I make a choice that I want a minus 10 and a plus 10 y. So I multiply the top line by minus 2 and the bottom line by plus 5. And once I do that, I get minus 10 y plus 10 y. When I add the lines together, I get 22x equals 33, which means the y's cancelled out or became 0. I get x equals 3 over 2 for the first variable. When I sub that back in, I end up saying, finding, sorry, that y is equal to 2. So this is question 9. And again, we have a fraction again in my second equation. But this one has a little bit more to it. We have a fraction with a 3 on the bottom and a 2 on the bottom. So how am I going to get rid of these fractions? I multiply across by 3 and 2 or 6, whichever. I like to do it separately because it's very visual. You can see what's happening. So when I multiply across by those and we divide anything that needs to be divided, I end up with 10x minus 3y equals 72. I bring these back to the left-hand side and I bring my two equations together and I notice that all I need to do is actually change the sign on the y values to make it work. So I multiply the top line by minus 1. I get minus 2x plus 3y equals minus 24 there. I solve for my first variable, x equals 6. And then I sub that 6 back into one of the original equations and I find y is equal to minus 4. This is a challenging one. So question 10 gives us two equations with fractions. So you're just going to have to get rid of the fractions. So the equation on the left hand side there, I'm going to multiply across by 3 and 5 to eliminate those fractions. And I end up creating a nice little linear equation of 10x plus 3y equals 115. And on the right hand side, I'm going to multiply across by 10 and 2 in order to get rid of those fractions. And I end up with the equation 6x minus 30 y equals minus 90. I bring those two equations together and I go through my four steps of simultaneous equations like we've done in the last nine examples. You can see here that the way they make these more difficult is by not having the equations in the correct form or having them as fractions. So that's an extra layer of difficulty that they can add on. But the four steps are set in stone and they do not change when you've got two linear equations. Check out my latest episode of Solved, the Leaving Cert Maths podcast, where I actually talk through simultaneous equations for two linear equations, exactly like these examples, and I give you all the stats and information you need to know on it. It's all linked below in the description, so go check that out. If you want more support, I have a lovely digital download for simultaneous equations on my website, mrsmatsireland.com. Again, it's all linked below. And last thing I need you to do is make sure that you subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, because this is a lovely free resource that anybody can use, and I will see you in the next one.